you're just having trying to get on on time. Thanks to everybody who's tuning in already. I see y'all chatting it up in the YouTube chat. And those of you that are watching on Facebook, it'll probably kick in in a second once everything goes live. So if you are not familiar with me or my channel here, I go live on Wednesdays at now 5 p.m. Eastern and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern. We do different demos. I chat about crafty stuff and sometimes we do flash sales. This week, it's just a live chat, so a laid-back live chat, and I'm going to be crocheting today. I um, have had a very busy week. We've been moving everything, the last bits, out of our brick-and-mortar store, which we had to close, and so that's going to be closed for good, so we'll just be online, just like we were before. Um, the shop was closed. We closed up last March, and so it's been closed all year. So our lease came up, you know, it's done, and so we thought, okay, we're not going to renew it. We're just going to close it all together. One year of a closed shop was plenty for my pocketbook. So and now we are here going live twice a week and the feedback has been amazing. I'm so thankful for those of you that continue to support us on uh, online, obviously with our sales, with our courses, with our digital um, platforms and clubs and things like that that I offer. You can always find us at craftygemini.com. And I'm pretty active on social media, including Instagram, TikTok now. And I need to get more uh, uh, consistent on posting videos to TikTok, but it's kind of a fun platform to play around with. And then Facebook, of course, and YouTube. And you can find me in any of the social media platforms under Crafty Gemini or The Crafty Gemini. All right. So hi, everybody. I'm coming to you from my home sewing studio. We live in North Central Florida. And I'm going to just say hi to a couple of friends that are tuning in. Hi, Mary. Hi, Garnet. Tuning in. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. we got friends tuning in from Arizona. Hi, Gail. Patty is tuning in, LaTanya, hi Joe, tuning in, Willow is on, oh my gosh, we have a lot of friends, great, I can now see the Facebook and the YouTube chat here. Now, if you're watching the recording, anything we talk about, we'll usually link to it in the video description box if you're watching us on YouTube or on Facebook, you can kind of go through the chat and see what we're talking about. Now, the crocheted washcloth that I'm working on is uh, something I came up with last year, it's a little... Kind of a quick and easy design. If you know the, some basic crochet stitches, you'll definitely be able to make it. So I'll talk a little bit about it. I already have a free a video tutorial, step-by-step, -step, with all the close-up shots and all that, on my YouTube channel. So anytime you want to find any tutorials that I've done for free on my YouTube channel, if you just do a search for the terms Crafty Gemini, and then follow that by whatever words of the project that you're looking for. So like Crafty Gemini, quilt binding, any videos I have on quilt binding will pop right up for you on YouTube. You can even type it into Google. Um, so for this one, if you just do Crafty Gemini crochet washcloth, any videos I have on crochet washcloths will pop up right there for you. Okay, this one is my ribbed crochet dishcloth or washcloth. I, I don't know, like a lot of people use them for dishcloths. There's something about the openness of the fabric. I just can't get around to washing dishes with it. But we love them in my house as washcloths, like to take a bath and shower with, right? So let's see. Um, okay, hi, everybody. Oh, great. We got some people tuning in from California, Jersey, more Cali friends. Trish is tuning in from Australia. Hi, Trish. And so this rib crochet dishcloth includes a PDF download, a free PDF pattern uh, with, with the instructions. That way you can just put it in your project bag and take it with you. But I do have the step-by-step -step video tutorial. And in my house, we're always fighting over these washcloths. So I thought, you know, what a perfect way to wind down a very busy week of moving Breaking down long arms, tables, sewing machines, boxing them up, doing all that kind of stuff, taking down all the shelves from the walls and stuff. So we've been toting a lot of stuff this week, moving everything out of the shop back to our home studio spaces. And um, I feel like tonight I'm, I'm going to go live, but I'm like, I'm just going to lay back and chill a little bit. So if you have a drink or you have some type of handwork project that you're working on too, that would be fun. It's just going to be a laid back chat. Linda says that she gives her washcloths or dishcloths away. She says she doesn't care to use them, though. Uh, oh, great. Mary Grace says that she's been practicing her crocheting, and she's starting on her next ribbed washcloth. Yay! We're twinsies, girl. All right. Awesome. Oh, Wendy finished her mug rug. Now, for those of you that are wondering in the chat what people are talking about these mug rugs, uh, on Wednesday, the live that I did, that Whip Wednesday episode, I think it's Whip Wednesday number 26, I was using up some fabric scraps. Let me see. And I, and I was telling my husband, I'm like, I said I was going to crochet tonight, but I don't even know if I can crochet and talk at the same time and remember the pattern. But let give me a second. Let me just start. We're going <laughs> to uh, chain one, then turn my work. Then I'm 
two single crochets in the first and then one in each and we're going just through the back loop and I'm saying that more so for myself than for y'all just so that I don't mess this one up but the beauty of washcloths is that who cares right if you have one messed up stitch or 12 messed up stitches it's still gonna wash the same <laughs> all right so now I blanked oh I was talking about the mug rugs from Wednesday so I was using up fabric scraps and batting scraps and I was doing like a uh, quilt as you go type of method and um, I made like a large ish panel like that which I knew was going to be big enough for two uh, two mug rugs and a mug rug for those that don't know it's so funny I feel like they've been around forever but every time I mention it people are like what is a mug rug so a mug rug what did I say last time Carla I said uh, if a coaster and a placemat had a baby it would be a mug rug so it's bigger than a drink coaster but smaller than a placemat and so they're great scrap busting projects they are great to give as gifts and if you just have a lot of scraps which most of us quilters do it's a great way to practice new techniques on a smaller scale free motion quilting on a smaller scale and then you just you can make a bigger panel chop it up into however many mug rugs that will yield you. And there's really no set size for the mug rugs. Like I said, bigger than a uh, coaster, but smaller than a placement. And I almost said smaller than a washcloth. <laughs> My brain, I'm doing all kinds of multitasking right now, y'all. Okay, so I did another row. So uh, do we have the bubble up there? If we can get the bubble now. We're going to do a little picture in picture, but with my hands this time. So maybe y'all can, I mean, obviously this is not meant to be a tutorial, but so you all can see a little bit of what I'm doing. Am I in the center there? Okay, great. So I started down here and then I've been increasing. And now I'm just following along like with the pattern. It's just like row four. And you keep doing that and, and you're increasing by two on each row. We're starting with two single crochet in the first and two single crochet in the last. So we're adding two every row. And so the whole thing starts to increase, increase, increase. This is a cutesy little one, huh? And so I don't know, I can't see which corner I started from, but say I started here, increase, increase, increase until you get to this midpoint, like what the diagonal would be of half the size that you want yours to be, okay? And then you do two even rounds, I believe, and then we start decreasing, and then it kind of goes from here wide to small, 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 small to finish it off. And that's how you end up with the square washcloth. Obviously, if you go off on anything or like you do too many increases in one than the other, then it might be like a slightly pointier end than the other, wider on one side. But again, it's still a washcloth, right? So I feel like it's still a great beginner project. And the ribbed uh, kind of look that you get to it. I feel like it's great for washcloths because it gives more texture to it. And we just create that by uh, crocheting through the back loop. Instead of going through the V, like the full crochet stitch, I just go in through the back loop and it creates this kind of ribbed thing feel to it. It's awesome. I love it. And it's not super dense because if you know about crochet, if you have a really dense washcloth done crocheted, okay, and it gets wet, it ain't never going to dry. <laughs> And they take forever to dry. So I wanted to design something that was a little bit more airy and open. It wasn't quite as dense, right? Uh, because it's just like a, a chunkier stitch than it would be like on a knitted washcloth, right? So I, I make those two and I have one. So if you're a knitter, <laughs> I have so many works in progress, y'all. So many UFOs. It's just like, what shall we work on today? Here is a partial... <laughs> a uh, washcloth that I'm knitting and this is one of my patterns too and I have a free tutorial on this one with a free pattern uh, printable as well so if you don't crochet no worries I got the knitting version for you and this is my grid stitch knit um, washcloth super cute again great texture um, but maybe not for beginners just 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 a little bit more of a pattern repeat to pay attention to and and you got to keep track of your stitches on that one otherwise it throws the whole pattern off okay uh, oh, so Susie says if you can move the bubble to the other side of the screen so it's not covered. I guess there's like the live button, you know, that says live. So you can, yeah, 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 you can scoot it to this side. Just don't cover up all my minis. Or is that on that side? Oh, it's on the other side. Yeah, why not? Who cares? As long as they can see me. <laughs> okay, uh, Leanne is asking, can it be acrylic or a cotton acrylic blend? Or must it be 100% cotton? So it's up to you. I think it kind of depends on what the actual purpose is. I feel like if you're going to be washing dishes and pots with it, it doesn't really have to be cotton. Um, if you're going for more of that scrapey feel, right? They make crocheted scrubbies out of all kinds of materials. So that would work. The, the yarn that we use, and actually, let me go ahead and say this now because I don't think I have that many of these left. We had put together these kits 
for this project. So you get the printed PDF in there, even though it's free online. If, if y'all have the supplies, you can just click the link in the video and get access to it. But we put together little link, uh, little links, you see? Um, little kits for those of you that maybe wanted to get started with it and didn't have um, the supplies and materials. So we have, of course, my little uh, signed thank you card. You get um, a little Crafty Gemini sticker. Uh, the darning needle, like the tapestry needle, it, for you to uh, weave in your ends at the end of your project. This is super important, whether you knit or crochet. And if you knit or crochet, you probably have like 30 of them. Then you get two balls of yarn, one that's multicolored and one that's solid. And the yarn that I'm using, which is the same as the ones that I have on my lap here, is by Premier, and it is a cotton polyester blend. So 85% cotton, 15% polyester. And I like it because it's mostly cotton, but the colors, the polyester makes the colors more vibrant and Y'all know I like color, so I need my pops of color in my washcloths. And then you get a full kit that has uh, 11 sizes of my exclusive uh, crochet hook set. This is a Crafty Gemini crochet hook set that has 11 different sizes in it. So obviously the size to make the washcloth is included in there. And if you want to make it more dense or you want to make it more open, you can just go up or down a hook size. So I think we only have a few of these left. We were running super low, but I thought, you know, I'll mention it anyways. In case some of you didn't know that we have that. Uh, when we sell out of those, it will take us several weeks, if not a month or so, to restock them. So if you're thinking you might want to get one, uh, definitely check that out. Okay, and the link for that is in the description box below, and we can include it for y'all in the in the Facebook chat as well if you're watching on uh, on Facebook. Okay. Oh, Mary Grace says she loves the yarn that she got in her washcloth kit. Thank you, Mary Beth. I'm glad to hear it. Um, I choose everything that we buy here. Anything that we sell in our online shop, I'm the one curating it. So if it ain't cute, I ain't getting it. Uh, <laughs> so usually, you know, they're bright, fun colors and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm. some of you are asking about the yarn, um, if it's cotton or not. This is, again, 85% cotton, 15% uh, polyester. Um, and you can see how vibrant the colors are. Super cute and fun. All right, so... Some of y'all are talking about the Clammy Quilt Club. We've been working on our curves. Our fifth project goes up on Monday. We're working with uh, clamshells, and it, it's it's a little tricky. I mean, sewing curves, right? The more pieces, the trickier it can be. So I'm gonna go ahead and start another row right here. And so when I start, well, let me start back. I'm gonna chain one, then I'm gonna turn my work. And in the first single crochet, not in that first chain one that I just did at the end, in the, in the first single crochet stitch, I'm going to do um, two single crochets. So that's one, and that's one. And it's pretty mindless. Once you make a couple of them, or once you start the first couple rows, then you can just remember it, because it's just chain one, then you turn, then it's two single crochet in the first single crochet stitch, and then you just do one in each. And all of these are done in the back loop. And you know, I was just thinking about this the other day. I was working on my crochet stuff, and I'm thinking, I wish I could change the way I crochet. And it's so hard because I've been crocheting since I was nine years old, and I learned like in an after-school program, somebody's Cuban grandma used to come after school, walk to our after-school program, and just teach us random little things while we were sitting there in after school. I grew up in Miami. And... Um, she just taught me how to do the basis of crocheting. And I remember all I used to do was like big triangles. So I guess I was like doing an increase at the beginning and end of each row. And it would just keep getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. And it would just be a triangle. Like that was it. I never remember anyone saying anything about, I mean, we didn't even call the stuff single crochet or double crochet because she was teaching us everything in Spanish. <laughs> wow. But I, I definitely took to it. And I was like, look at all my little Christmas trees that I have crocheted in the fourth grade. It was awesome. And so, you know, nobody ever taught me like how to tension the yarn, how to hold it. It was just like, look what I'm doing, girl, do this. <laughs> and so now being a teacher for so long and knitting and crocheting, now like I look at what I'm doing and it's like, seriously, like I can't even teach this to people because I don't even know what I'm doing. My hands have been doing it for almost 30 years. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, soaping girl says, can we see the hook in motion? Let's see if I can get you there. Does that work? Can you see? Or should I zoom out a little bit maybe for this shot? Is that better? Can you see me a little bit? Yeah. But I feel like this thing is not, um, does it look like it's in focus? Cause you know that camera, I can't really see it from here. Okay. So the hook in motion. Pretend you don't see my hands doing whatever it is that my hands do. So I'm going in the back loop of that one, right? The first 
So I just do a single crochet. And a single crochet, for those that don't know, you're just gonna go in, you yarn over. That's what we call like grabbing new yarn from what's connected to the ball of yarn. And I'm bringing it in. So I have now two loops on my crochet hook. Then I grab yarn again, so yarn over, and then pull through both of those. So that's two. And then I'm just gonna keep doing one of those in the back loop of each one of these stitches. And each little V shape or like a heart shape is one stitch. So I'm only going in the back loop, and the back loop means it's the leg of the little V stitch that's furthest away from me. So the one that way. And I just go in, grab yarn, come up, grab yarn, come through both. And so that is what I'm doing there. So yeah, it's so funny. Like, yeah, I've been crocheting since I was nine, but clearly I had no idea what I was doing until I was like 19. <laughs> I remember going home from college one weekend, like on a bus that would go down from our university down to Miami. I went to school at the University of Florida, so it's it would be like a six and a half hour bus, bus ride. And I remember grabbing like some acrylic orange and blue yarn and I was like, oh, I'm gonna make myself, a, I'm gonna crochet myself a hat on the way down, then I'll have it for game day weekends. And I did not even have a pattern, y'all. I was just like, I would start a circle and like go big and round, round, round until I felt like, okay, that's kind of big enough to fit my head. And then I started decreasing and riding it straight down and being like, oh, it was a little bit big. Let me pull back 17 rows and make it a little wider. And then I crocheted again. So it was all trial and error. And I don't know why I never thought to like find a book. <laughs> we didn't have YouTube in those days. So that's one. And then in the last uh, single crochet stitch, I'm going to do two again because I got to add an extra one there. Normally you do one, right? If you were stitching in each of the previous stitches, but because we're doing two in one, that's a one stitch increase, okay? Okay, so let's see. All right. Um, okay, so some of y'all are in the Clammy Quilt Club. Amy says she's getting ready to start her clamshell quilt. Oh my gosh, I'm missing so much going on in the chat, y'all. All right. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, awesome. Don says you're an awesome teacher. She saw me on knit and crochet now. That's awesome. So you must be watching a replay because I think that was season eight and nine or something like that. I was a guest instructor on knit and crochet now. It's a PBS uh, crafting show like for knitting and crocheting several years back. So sometimes I still get messages or people will send me a little screenshot like, I caught you at three o'clock this morning on knit and crochet now. I love it. Um, let's see. That's right, Maria says the UF Miami buses. I remember, of course, girl, that's the only way we could get home for $35. Otherwise, you weren't going home from college. All right, so I chained one, I turned my work. Now in the first single crochet, I'm gonna do two again. And I'm gonna do several rows here just because I want y'all to see how it's been growing while we've been sitting here chatting with those increases. Let's see, I'm gonna do a couple more. And again, you know, if you're maybe if you're still learning and you're doing like single, oops, I split a stitch. Let me go back. Um, if you're just starting off and you want to practice, because all you really need to know for stitches are like a slip knot for this project, how to make a slip knot to start, how to do two chain stitches. That's all we start off with, and then single crochet. We're doing that the whole way, and then still single crochet. And I'm like walking through the pattern in my head. And then for the decreases, we single crochet two stitches together which is not that difficult. And again, I have a video tutorial on how to do it or how to make the whole uh, washcloth. And so you can watch that if you want to see, but it's, it's not hard at all, you know, but there's not like any other complicated stitches. And then we do a single crochet border around the whole thing. If you want to kind of tidy it up and make it look a little bit more finished around the edges and that's it. So, like I said, I think it's a beginner friendly project. As long as you know how to kind of like hold the crochet hook, and um, tension the yarn somewhat. If you're still learning and practicing, you know, loose stitches here and some tighter stitches there is not gonna really matter because like I said, it's a washcloth. It's still gonna wash the same. Okay, cool. So this is one of the funnest parts of crocheting and knitting with multicolored yarns. Once you start, you're working, 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 and then you're like, ooh, new color. Does anybody else get excited when they see that? It's like the pop of the purple is starting to creep in. I think it's one of the, the great things about working with like speckled yarn in knitting and crochet where you're like working and then you work a stitch and you're like, ooh, that little pop of hot pink that just popped in. It just helps to kind of change things up of staring at the exact same thing, at, you know, the whole time you're working on that project. All right, so that was the last stitch of that row and I did two in it. So now we chain one, turn, and I'm gonna do start again. First stitch, whoop, and the back loop takes two single crochets. 
and, and, you know, before I started knitting like for real and actually following patterns, I used to say like, how do these people like remember the whole pattern in their head? They're like, oh yeah, just do three in one and three in the back loop and then do this and two together and whatever. And you're thinking, <laughs> how do they even remember the pattern? But it's kind of like a thing that you get into the zone as you're working on it. I feel like it's different than if you're, when you're working on it versus watching someone do it because you're not actually going through the movement. So once you start doing it, you know, if you hear other teachers say the same thing, you'll memorize the pattern. It's a really quick pattern to memorize, like all that. It, it really can be once you're actually working in it, even if you feel like you can't memorize it by watching first. But like this becomes second nature, you know? It's so wild. I'm like literally looking at my hands and I'm like, what are you doing? So notice how I tension the yarn. I have it over and like around my pinky and then I just grab with my middle and ring finger to like hold it. Oh my gosh. I could just see my, my nine-year-old self like, okay, let's just hold the yarn <laughs> and crochet. Yeah. So it just, it's one of those things where whatever ends up working for you will end up working, period, you know? So don't feel like if you're trying to tackle crochet or knitting and maybe you're watching a YouTuber or watching another teacher online or in person and you feel like you can't copy them, the exact same thing they're doing, don't worry so much about hand and finger placement, but worry more about trying to yield, like to get the end result of what they're doing, right? So like if you're going in to grab yarn, some people hold it like this, some people hold it like this, some people hold it like that, you know, and kind of move the yarn more around the hook versus digging in with the hook. Whatever you find that your, you know, how your motor skills allow you to get the job done, then th there's no right or wrong way to do it. Look how cute with that purple popping in there. Can y'all see that? This way. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Let me check in here. Let me pop in and check in with the chat, see if I can answer some questions. Um, Tino's asking about, uh, have I started the video about that Juki MO114D surgery yet? I have not. Um, we'll be working on a couple things coming up next. So the next thing after the Climbing Quilt Club is over is going to be the next bag club, which a lot of you have been waiting for now for two years, a year and a half on the next bag club. And then I'll be, uh, working on the surger videos with that as well. So that's kind of in the next batch of stuff that I'll be doing this spring. Okay. All right, let's see. Joan was asking, just wondered if you're going to show us the finished mug rug on Wednesday. Maybe next Wednesday, because I haven't finished. I trimmed them all up. I separated them into two mug rugs. And actually, yesterday, I thought I was going to finish them, but I wanted to figure out what binding fabric I wanted to use on them. The fabrics were a little bit muted. Actually, Brandon, can you um, see back there somewhere if you can, the, two, the mug rugs that I was working on Wednesday, just so I can show them all trimmed up? And then I will, um, I have to pick a binding fabric. It needs to pop because those fabrics are kind of so scrappy and all over the place that I really want them to sing. I don't, were they on the table? I don't think so. I think they're maybe in the back table there. They're two little rectangles. Find the mug rug. Yep, those are it. Grab them. Yes. So let me show you all where I ended up splitting them, which it wasn't a great idea to plant that middle circle right where I had done it. I should have done it a little bit more off center. Thank you. So here's one and here's the other. So look what happened. I slice it like just over from that middle square that I started off with, but they're going to be a perfect little size. And I can't tell you right now what they measure, but I would say something like seven and a quarter by 10 and a half ish, something like that. So those are going to be it. But you see how a lot of the colors are muted. There's little pops of color here and there, but um, I, I, I got to, I don't know. I have to audition some fabrics and see what I want to put around them. And, and the backing, of course, because that needs to be cute too on a mug rug. All right, let's see. Um, okay, let's see. Christine says, variations in tensioning, it's very regional. She says, her Hungarian grandmother couldn't read a pattern, but she could copy what she saw, and she had a very different way of holding the hook and yarn. Exactly. Everybody has their own way. There's no right or wrong way to do it, okay? Okay. Uh, Janice, you are so funny. She says, wow, another bag club? She's only halfway through the last one. <laughs> Lucky for you, you don't have to catch up, Janice, because the videos are always there for you to access them. All right. Let's see. 
Okay, so Nancy's asking, what is the bag club? So a bag club, uh, I do these online membership clubs uh, several times throughout the year for bags, for quilts, for different projects and stuff like that. And so it's basically like a bundle of different projects that I post the video courses for. It's like a paid program. And so we post the different video courses for the different bags, like it, the content is dripped out throughout whatever the time period is of that club. So we've done bag clubs that last six months and every month we're featuring a new project and the step-by-step -step video course lessons that go along with it. We sell kits to go along with it. We have live chats to go along with it. So it's like this whole online community uh, based around different projects. Right? So right now we're in the middle of the Clammy Quilt Club, and that is uh, a community of us learning how to sew curves using the Clammy ruler. So we're doing quarter circles, half circles, full circles, uh, orange peels, clamshell shapes. And so we meet live every Sunday, and every Monday I post a step-by-step -step video course lessons for that next shape and mini quilt project. So it's just like an online community. It's paid for projects and, and um, courses, and so it's obviously separate from all the Facebook and YouTube stuff, but yeah. Oh, Sheila's excited for another bag club. Um, Joan's asking, can you tell us what bags you'll be in, will be in your next bag club? So I always release that information before we open up the bag club. Um, so I'm actually in the process of um, finishing up like exactly how many bags, which ones I want to feature when. And so once I get everything together and have um, more details on like how many bags total will be in it and all that stuff, you know, we always give you all the details. That way you see exactly what it is, and then if you want to join, you can join, and if you don't, then you don't. Easy as that, okay? All right, oh, Becky says, bag club, sign me up. Yep, everybody's been waiting on the bag club, so it, I, I think y'all will like it, because I always try to feature new bags with different sizes and different techniques in each one, right? So not only are you making a different bag, but you're also learning different skills and techniques um, in the process of making that bag, okay? Uh, Janet is asking, what size needles are you using for the knitted socks? I'm going to assume you're talking to me, Janet, because I am working on knitted socks. So let me grab my little yarn bowl here. Hopefully I don't break it because this is a handcrafted ceramic bowl that I got from my friend Alex from Alex Creates. Check him out on Instagram. He has, um, a shop page too. I don't think he's dying yarn anymore, but look how cute. My yarn matches my yarn bowl, y'all. So this is yarn that I dyed, and this is a um, uh, knit cozy. This is a yarn cozy that I made, and I have a video tutorial on how to make this yarn cozy. I'm pulling this down because I want <laughs> to look at the pretty colors that I dyed in this yarn. So this yarn is 75% uh, wool and 25% nylon, so it's you know what typically referred to sock yarn. And I am working with pins for needles, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> we are working here with U.S. size ones, 2.25 millimeter, nine inch circular needles. I'm working on these socks. So this is just the cuff and a little bit of the leg. I don't need super long socks in Florida, right? So that's that one of the second sock. And then I'm working on this one. I'm trying to go at the same time so that I don't end up with what the people call one sock syndrome or something like that, where like you make the one sock and you're like, I'm over it. I'm done. And then it's like, you can't do anything with it because you need two socks typically. So here's this one, same thing, the cuff, the leg, and this is the heel flap. Super cute. So this is what I was talking about earlier with the yarn. When it's speckled and has a bunch of different colors, like every stitch that I work is like, ooh, another little pop of color. Ooh, that's navy. Ooh, that's yellow. Oh, I like that blue. Like it's super fun. And even though you're doing the exact same thing over and over again, it still keeps things interesting. So I'm very happy with this. I'm taking an online sock knitting class. I've worked on several other socks, but my friend Jana, she has a YouTube channel called Pearl Together. So P-U-R-L, like the pearl stitch of knitting. Um, pearl together and she has a bunch of really great knitting tutorials. She does like these knit alongs. So if you're into knitting and you're looking for like more of an online community around that, definitely check out Jana at Pearl together. She's on Instagram, on YouTube, and she's offering these like zoom classes. And we all know how we need to feel connected to people these days. Um, and I was looking for something that didn't require work for me. And I would just be like the student instead of the teacher. And so when I got her email saying she was teaching these cuff down socks using a using a heel flap and gusset technique, I thought, okay, I'm going to sign up. So I'm working on, again, <laughs> let's not talk about these teensy nine inch circulars. I'm still kind of getting used to them, but I feel like my hands now have 
gotten accustomed to them. Um, if you're not familiar with knitting small circumferences like this, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. You can do it magic loop style, which is a longer needle that is the cord is long enough for you to split it in half. So you basically have half the stitches here, half here. And it's kind of, I do a lot of stuff magic loop, but it's kind of annoying too, because you got to keep like moving them and working the cord and all this kind of garbage. And so these nine inch circulars allow me to just like work, 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 work. Although there's like not much room for me to put my ring fingers and my pinkies. So yeah, that's what I'm working on. US size ones. <laughs> it's it's so wild because when you first pick up needles that are that small to do socks, you're just like, what was I thinking? And then you work on it for a while and then you go to work on something with like a worsted weight yarn or something like this. And I'm like, good Lord, this is going to fly quick because this thing is huge. And it's like when you go from thin yarn to big yarn and big needles, you feel like, wow, this is so much bigger. It's going to fly. Right. And when we go from bigger yarn to smaller stuff, it looks like you're working with like needles and and and. <laughs> like pins and, and dental floss. It looks so small. All right. Let's see. Julie says she's a beginner-ish in sewing. Would it be best to start with the bag club from a couple years ago, like a progression of skills? So that's a great question, Julie. The bag club that I would recommend for a beginner-ish would actually not be the earlier ones, would be the 2019 bag club. Because that year, I noticed that there was a lot more beginners that were wanting to get into bags. And so all the bags in that one are more beginner-ish. Some of them you can crank out like this in no time, and a lot of my bag club students have been selling those bags. And we'll include a link here for y'all in the chat too for the bag club. That 2019 bag club is the one that I would recommend for you. And you can see all the projects that they are, you know, when you're reading the description, so you can see if, if it's something that you're interested in. So yeah. All right. Have you done an iPhone bag before or have you done one on your YouTube videos? I have um, a little cell phone pouch that I did years ago and it's based on you taking the measurements of your phone. So that might work. So again, if you're doing quick search or you're looking to see if I have tutorials on stuff, just go to youtube.com and type in in the search box, Crafty Gemini, and then whatever you're looking for. So type in Crafty Gemini phone pouch and the videos will pop up for you, okay? All right. Scrapping a Goddess is asking about the four pack pattern bundle in the shop. So just send us an email if you already have one of them and we can pull it out of that four pack for you. Okay. Um, oh, Elaine says she then takes a break and then forgets what she was doing. So that is, um, there's a lot of different apps. Like when it comes to knitting right now, a lot of my knitting friends are using like knit companion. I can't really speak to it because I have not, I think I downloaded it, but I haven't yet used it. And it's like, a, a lot of people that I follow like swear by it for lining up and marking off where they are in their patterns. Uh, and so when they put down a UFO, then they pick it back up. They can uh, quickly and easily go right back to where they left off if they're keeping track. For me, I still go the old school way of printing out the pattern. I don't even have my pattern here. But yeah, I print out the pattern and I'm marking off. If I need to do 15 rows of something, I'm literally doing little hash marks like one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I do them like that so that I can keep track of exactly what it is that I'm doing. So when I pick it up, I, I, I know where I'm at and um, how many rows I have done or whatever. Oh, thank you. Lindy, Lindy says, yes, I love the 2019 bag club. And Garnet says she agrees. The 2019 bag club, it was great. Casey says the same thing. 2019 was the best, she says. I learned so much and I am a beginner, which is so funny to hear y'all say that because I got so much feedback from people who had done the other ones and were saying like, oh, these are really easy. I was expecting harder bags. So it's kind of like there's some for everybody depending on your skill level. And a lot of my students sell at like craft fairs, Etsy shops, just to their friends and family on Facebook. And so if that's something that you're looking for is like quick and cute bag projects that you can make like that, definitely the 2019 one. Because you're learning still a bunch of different techniques, but it's not going to take you nine hours to make a bag. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, that's awesome. Lori says, I had considered myself a beginner at sewing and a newbie to quilting, but I undertook the Clammy Quilt Club anyway, and I have discovered that I'm more of an intermediate at sewing. And so this is so funny because you get this a lot as a teacher. I'll have students that sign up for like a quilting, like when I taught classes in person, they'd sign up for like a quilting 101 class, right? The basics of like cutting, how to use your rulers, rotary cutter, measuring. And like, I've had people show up to that quilting 101 class with like quilts in hand that they have made, hand pieced, hand appliqued. And it's like, why are you here? 
<laughs> and so sometimes they just take those classes, one, because they don't consider themselves beyond a beginner. It's like no matter how advanced they are, no matter what projects they've made, people, some people still consider themselves beginners. And then you have people that don't have much experience but are so confident that they're like, oh, I'm intermediate. <laughs> and they don't even have the basics down. So it's kind of like you can never really gauge um, where somebody is. So sometimes I'll say like, this is for a confident beginner. Like if you're new, but you're confident or you're not afraid of a challenge and you know, you're going to put in the work or you're not going to let the frustration, you know, and the struggle of like trying to figure it out, get to you, then yeah, you can totally do it. Cause it's different, right? When you have video tutorials and I'm walking you through step by step, you're seeing exactly what I'm doing. So even if you do it wrong, you can rip it back and then watch again and try it again. So Usually all that will still work for somebody who can, you know, is determined to get it done. All right. Okay, cool. So look how cute. So do you see how this is growing already? And I only start off with two chain stitches down here at the bottom. And so you would just keep going. So I think it's cool to note right here, if I wanted to start decreasing this and making it into like a, a little face um, cloth, like a little face scrubber or a makeup remover, you could do all that. And this would be cute to start off a kid or a teenager, somebody, you know, that's new to these types of crafts, because out of one ball of yarn, can you imagine how many of these little makeup scrubby thingies you can make in this size? It'd be perfect for practicing the basic um, techniques and the basic single crochet stitch, right? And you can make, I mean, at least a dozen for sure. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Lindy says she sold a lot of the crossbody bags from the 2019 with the matching um, Crafty Gemini coin purse. Awesome. I always say that in all my bag clubs. I'm like, by the time you sell a couple of these bags, you'll have made your money back on the bag club already. So it's totally worth it if you're someone who makes and sells stuff too, you know? Because that's something some people don't know. You can sell stuff that you um, that you make yourself from my projects and my videos and my whatever, tutorials, from the paid classes, all that stuff. All right. So let's see. <laughs> Oh, Beverly, she says, you're amazing. How do you find the time for all your projects and taking care of your family and garden and chickens, et cetera? Wow, girl. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of not finished projects. That's one of the reasons. Two is because I don't do all the taking care of all the stuff around here. My husband does most of the outside chores. My kids have their own chores and we all kind of, you know, chip in to do all the different things. My kids will cook sometimes. Sometimes I'll cook. Sometimes we grab something. It just you know, balancing it out depending on how busy my schedule is. If I have a lot of free time or I just finished a project or something, then yeah, we'll experiment more in the kitchen and I'll spend more time outside and all that. And right now for us, uh, none of our cows are in milk. So when the cows are in milk, that adds a lot more work uh, because like our Jersey cow has to be milked twice a day for at least the first two months because she makes so much milk that you don't want to run the risk of her getting mastitis even when she's um, with her calf, because we leave the mamas with their babies 24 seven. So we just go out there in the morning, I'll milk and I'll take whatever I can, right? So like if the calf just nursed and I get half a gallon, I get half a gallon. If the calf hasn't nursed and I get two and a half gallons and I take two and a half gallons and we just leave the babies with their mamas 24 seven. So the fact that they're with them all day long also makes them produce a lot more milk. So like my big Jersey, I mean, we don't even really know like her peak production because she's always had her baby on her, you know, so you can't really gauge how much they're drinking. Um, and I've never not, I've never had her without a baby. So I, I think because sometimes the calf will be just like milk drunk as we call it with their tongue hanging out and they're super stuffed and the belly's all full. And I still go out there and milk three gallons. So I'm thinking lower, she must've had like five gallons or six, you know what I mean? So she makes a lot of milk and that is kind of more of a mission. None of them are in milk right now, so I don't have to get up early to milk any cows. <laughs> um, in nine months, that will be a different story because we think one of them is bred and the other one um, might get bred soon. So we'll see. Um, Doreen says she grew up on fresh Jersey milk. Girl, there's nothing like it. I remember last year, my daughter uh, wanted to go to school to try it out for a bit, and she went to school in February. So she was only at her local school for three weeks until everything shut down. And she came home one day and tells me like the lady at the lunch thing, you know, I paid the, like a left her with a balance. So if she wanted to eat there, she could, or I packed her lunch, she could eat that, you know, whatever she wanted to do. And so she comes home and says, oh, the lady in the cafeteria um, is always offering me milk. And I always say no. So today she asked me if I'm dairy free. And my daughter's like, no, I'm not dairy free. And the lady's like, oh, but you don't drink the milk. She's like, yeah, because it's gross. 
So I asked her what it tasted like, and she says that it literally tastes like just dirty water. So it's funny for me to hear that from a kid who was literally raised, you know? It's like she went from breast milk to raw Jersey cow milk, and then they go to give her like the little school milk. She was like, I don't even know how the, my friends drink that stuff. <laughs> I was like, you should tell her that you're like bougie dairy. Like you need the fancy, fancy stuff that tastes super creamy and fresh. But yeah, she was like, it literally tastes like dirty water. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's see. Oh, Judy's asking for the 2019 bag club. She says she doesn't see it in the shop. So when you go to craftygemini.com slash shop, at the top, you'll see like the little names for the sub menus. And there's one for club memberships. When you click on that one, then you'll see all the bag clubs pop up for you. Okay? Huh? Oh, it's not? It's really not. Okay, well, thank you for telling us. My husband says that it's not up there, so I'll have to check that today. Might get put to, like, draft mode or something. Um, oh, wait, no, you know what? The 2019 Bag Club was the one that we didn't put it up after. They could only get the, the, the lessons individually. That's why it's not up there. Okay, so, yeah, maybe I'll send out an email with the links to the different video or, or to the different bags that were in that club. Yeah, because every year we kind of try to, you know, make some different changes and stuff to the way that we do things. So in the past, we had the previous clubs that you could sign up for, like, at a higher price after it was over. And then that club, we did it um, where, like, once the club went away, it went away. So then people that wanted to sign up for one or two classes had to wait until the courses were listed individually. So I'll have to go back and pull a list of like which classes were included in that bag club so that, you know, if there's classes that you want to sign up for there, you can do it that way. But yeah, I forgot about that. Oh man, that was a good one. All right. Christine's asking, what cheeses do you make? She said, when they had dairy cows, they made Gouda cheese. I've never tried none of the fancy ones. I mostly make like queso blanco or... Um, uh, mozzarella for sure. Those are the ones that we mostly make with the, with the milk because that's mostly what we eat. So we'll make like fresh pizza and then slice the mozzarella on it. What? Amazing. Okay. Look how cute this is getting. I'm going to keep working on this. Maybe I'll just post a finished picture of this one um, on social media after. Let me do two in here before I forget. And then one in each one of these. I actually had bought all the stuff um, to do like cheddar cheese and stuff, but I don't have any of like the molds um, to make like the big rounds, you know, that you press the little, the little mold thing that you press it on and it gets everything out. Yeah. So anyways, um, Carla's asking, what are you crocheting? She just got on. So I'm crocheting my ribbed dishcloth or washcloth. These ones here, it's a free PDF pattern and video tutorial that I have, and I'm working on a new one here. And I like this because you can control how big the washcloth is, right? If you're working with just a scrap ball of your yarn that you had a little bit left over from another project, you can weigh it, okay? Grams, weigh, weigh the ball of yarn that you have to work with, and then work the increases all the way until you weigh the ball of yarn and you're at the halfway point, right? So say you have 20 grams of yarn. Knit, like what I, uh, knit, oh my gosh. Crochet, <laughs> like I'm doing here at the beginning, um, until you feel, until you weigh whatever is left of the ball of yarn and you see you have 10 grams and you're kind of at the halfway point and then work those two straight rows and then start decreasing and you'll get all the way to the end. So it's, it's kind of a cool way by, um, building the washcloth like this, that you can work it, uh, based on how much yarn you have. Like you can just work halfway and then keep going. So you can make it super small, super big, whatever you have yarn for to make. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so Joan says, so for the mug rug, you said you put binding around it uh, the same way as you would put around a baby blanket. So I, the binding, not around a baby blanket, but around a quilt. So the same way I would do a quilt binding. And I actually got a couple messages from some ladies that had seen it and were asking like, well, how are you going to put the binding on? You know, they're kind of new to quilting. And so I sent the link to a video that I have on my YouTube channel. Y'all can look it up. It's called, um, it's like attaching binding and hanging a mini quilt. So it's basically a video where I show you step-by-step step the finishing steps of a little mini quilt, which is the same idea as a mug rug, right? A mug rug is a mini quilt. It's a little bitty quilt sandwich. And so I show you how to measure, how to make the binding, how to attach it, how to finish off the ends. A lot of people struggle with that part. And then um, you can follow those steps to add it to your mug rug. Same idea, okay? Let's see. 
Oh, Casey says, I got off Facebook. Where will you post the new bag club? She cannot miss that. Uh, I will always send out emails, Casey. So if you're on the email newsletter, that the same way that we notify everybody of when we open the cart, when the registration signups are ready for people to sign up for any of the courses, you know, we do them all through. Um, we do them on Facebook too, but I'll also do it on YouTube and then via email for sure. And then I'll be, because I'm going live now twice a week, I'll definitely be mentioning it on these Wednesday and Friday videos. So if you're someone who's kind of watching these ones uh, every week, you won't miss it. Yeah, won't miss it. We'll definitely keep you posted. All right. Let's see. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and call it a day. Let me remember to do my two single crochets right here at the end. So I know <laughs> where I'm at when I start the next row. Oh, I like these colors. Look how cute. It's just like different shades of like fuchsia, light purple, purple. And, and some of it is kind of like a bluish, like a watered down blueish color. So this is going to be a super cute one. So I will be working on this. I will be working on picking out my binding fabric for my little mug rugs that we started working on together on Wednesday. If you're working on mug rugs, uh, post pictures. If you're on social media, if you're on Instagram, just use the hashtag Crafty Gemini. Uh, or tag me at Crafty Gemini so I can see what you're working on, okay? Thank you, everybody, for joining me. And if you want to check out the crochet washcloth pattern, definitely uh, head on over to YouTube or use the link that I've included for you in the description box below this video. And uh, you can print out the PDF and watch the step-by-step -step video for the same washcloth that I'm currently working on right here, all right? Thank you, everybody. Have a great night and enjoy your weekend. I'll see y'all. Today is Friday. I'll see y'all on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, okay, for Whip Wednesday, so.